Hi, thanks for joining the show. My name is Whitney Keys, and today I'm going to be talking with author Maria Ross. She's written a book called Rebooting My Brain, and it's about her experiences surviving a brain aneurysm. Maria, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So take us back several years ago to explain what happened to you with this brain aneurysm. So in 2008, um, I had been suffering from some severe headaches for a while, and um, I collapsed at home from what turned out to be a ruptured brain aneurysm. Luckily, my husband came home from work early that day and got me to the hospital right away, which um, was very important in saving my life. After doing some emergency scans, they realized that it was a ruptured brain aneurysm that caused what's called a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is a certain type of bleed in your brain, a certain type of stroke. And they performed some emergency procedures, and I was probably in the hospital a total of about six weeks between ICU, neurosurgery, and then also inpatient rehab. And then I spent many more months and the subsequent years just in recovery, dealing with my cognitive and, and emotional impairments from the brain injury itself, getting my strength back. Um, I had some vision issues that were a result of the hemorrhage, so I had to wait till my sight kind of cleared up and had some, some eye surgeries to deal with that. But um, yeah, that, that was really what happened. And I eventually got back to work and got back into my life again. And, and here I am now writing this book about the experience. You talk about some other things in the book, some themes and sort of values that carried you through this experience. What were a couple of those that were most impactful for you? Yeah, I think with distance from the recovery and now that I'm sort of back into things, into the swing of things, I started to see a pattern of, of some major themes emerging that helped me with my victories as I went along in my recovery and my rehab. And to me, it kind of boiled down to three things, patience, acceptance, and using humor to get you through. And um, those seem to pop up over and over again as, as the main themes to, that were, what I feel were the key to my recovery. And then what about a sense of humor? I know you have a great one, but how did that play out? And I mean, how do you, how do you make jokes and laugh about a situation like this? Well, I think it's really important. I think as humans, we just need to use humor to get us through some tough times, to, to lighten the load, to let off steam, to um, sort of clear our heads a little bit from all the stress so that we can think more clearly as we're going forward. And my family and my friends, you know, used a lot of humor, uh, some gallows humor while I was, you know, in surgery or in ICU, but that really helped them get through everything. And I think a lot of people are scared to, to laugh or smile or find the humor in, in a really dire situation. But um, what I talk about a lot in the book is that if that's what you need to get you through, you, you should embrace that. And um, we had a lot of humorous moments with things that I said and did. You know, again, I was brain injured. I was on a lot of powerful sedatives and powerful medications. And, and there's nothing you can do but laugh because then you'll just cry. So it was really about um, being okay with using that humor to help you get through the hurdles. I so agree. We do really separate joy and happiness with depression and sadness, and they can commingle and help mm -hmm. you get through. So one of the third themes that you mentioned was acceptance. And so how do you move through all of this and come to a place of acceptance? It's got to be so hard. Well, I think that I was my own worst enemy at the beginning of my recovery because I w kept trying to get back to the way things were before. And I was getting frustrated because I wasn't getting back to the way things were before quickly enough. And what I learned is that, you know, with a brain injury, there's impairments, there's brain damage, there's cells that die in your brain. And so some things are not going to go back to the way they used to be. And actually the sooner that you can learn that and educate yourself and accept that there's a new you, the, the faster you can recover, so to speak, because you, you get out of your own way, you remove the blockage and you say, okay, I'm not gonna keep fighting this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna accept who I am now. I'm gonna play to the strengths that I have now and I'm, I'm going to adapt new strategies to manage my time and my work and my relationships differently. You know, one theme that you bring up in the book that I found so fascinating is this concept of does your brain define your personality or does your personality sort of help develop your brain? And going through this, what is your perspective now on that? Yeah, I think there's actually been a lot of research, medical research um, on that topic and you know, I would encourage people to explore that a little bit more. What I bring up in the book as my personal memoir, not as a me medical book, is this idea that, that brain injury can actually change 
who you are. It can change things you're good at. It can change your emotions. It can change uh, your patience level. And so we often define ourselves by the things that we do. Like he's a go-getter, she's a neat freak. And if those things can change when the wiring or the chemistry in your brain gets altered, does that fundamentally mean that, that your brain itself is responsible for your personality? Or does your personality inform the way your brain operates and works? And I don't think I have the answer, but I just think it's an interesting thing to explore about how you feel about innate personality and what is a soul and what is the personality and, and how is it impacted. I think that there's aspects of my personality that are, still remain true, um, my humor, my stubbornness, my impatience, but um, there's certain things I'm not as good at, at doing as I was before, and I used to define myself by those things. So um, it's just a really interesting question of what comes first. That's why I called that chapter the chicken or the egg. Um, does your brain chemistry and function determine your personality, or does your personality affect your brain? It's another question I have is you are not a medical expert, but you sort of could be having gone through this for the past number of years. And part of your research, you were really disciplined and detailed in going and talking to doctors, nurses, all sorts of medical professionals. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that journey from an author's perspective and patient's perspective? Well, it was interesting because I, I was going at it from a journalistic point of view, but I was talking to my actual neurosurgeon who saved my life on the night I almost died, my actual rehab psychologist. So. In, in getting the information from them, they were actually showing me scans of my brain. They were showing me the notes that they wrote about my case and my situation. And so I, I did a good job of distancing myself a little bit from the personal side of it, but it was, it was kind of exciting, to be honest, to go back and talk to these doctors with the benefit of, okay, so help me close that gap. What actually happened on this day and what actually happened during this surgery and, and what was I like during this time? Because I don't think a lot of patients get to do that because they're not writing a book about their experiences. So they don't get to go back and interview their doctors. And I, I just found it really eye-opening and, and my doctors were so generous with their time and their information to, to make sure that that information got out because there's so much people don't understand and know about brain injury. So if people want to read this book, where can they find it? If, you know, and again, it seems like it would be a great fit for someone who's got a loved one or a family member or a friend going through this. Maybe someone themselves have gone through it. Where can they buy this book? Well, I'm intending it sort of for, for two camps, really. Um, number one, just, just people that are really interested in memoir and interested in inspirational books and, and anyone that's sort of gotten yanked out of their life by crisis that, that wants some, some perspective and, and a story about how to get through that and what can help you through. And secondly, I, I did write the book for brain injury patients and their families and their caregivers or people that know brain injury patients in their lives, whether it's um, you know, through a traumatic event that they got their brain injury, like a car accident, or whether it's, like for me, a stroke or an aneurysm. Um, and I wanted to give them resources and also help them understand that the symptoms they're probably going through are, are common. I didn't know that when I was going through a lot of this. So I, I didn't want them to feel alone and I wanted them to have a book that they could read to say, oh my gosh, see, I'm, I'm normal and, and this, this does happen because you have a brain injury. They can find the book at rebootingmybrain.com. That's the main book website, but they can also find it on amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com and various other e-readers and, and places like that. Great. Thank you so much, Maria, for sharing your story with us. And I've read the book, and I can't wait to recommend it to other people. Thanks. Thanks.